here at RU. There really are so many productions I'm proud of. But the one that stands out in my mind the most is Antigone, directed by Deborah Montfort. Everyone knows me for my Victorian gowns in 1920s fashion, which is what I usually get hired for professionally. But Antigone gave me a chance to do something totally different. I asked Deborah if we could do a post-apocalyptic version. I thought it fit perfectly with the situation in the story. Thankfully, she agreed. I think the work I did on that show is some of my best. It forced me out of my comfort zone, and for the first time in quite a while, I had to think about the designs. The actors totally bought into the idea, and I had to pay it off in spades. Also, how many times do you get to take a blowtorch to a costume? <laughs> The most memorable moment of my career at the university came not from travel or the theater, but when I was serving the chair of the forum committee. After the events of 9-11, the committee thought that the focus of this series for the following year should be on the positive sides of Islam. We wanted to have a major speaker to open the series, so I started looking at various brochures from the speakers' agencies to see who was available. Fareed Zakaria, the CNN anchor, popped up, as well as another name that was not so familiar, Benazir Bhutto. I remember having read a Vanity Fair article from May of 1986 about a woman who had been elected Prime Minister of Pakistan. This intrigued me. How could a woman be elected Prime Minister of an Islamic country, yet we had to have a female president? The woman in the article was Benazir Bhutto. My first thought that her fee would be well out of our range, but I thought I should at least check it out. Fareed Zakaria's fee was $40,000. That was our budget for the entire year. Benazir Bhutto was $12,000 plus expenses. It seemed like this might be doable. Other members of the committee dismissed the idea, saying that she would never come to such a small venue as Rockford College. I was determined to make this happen. Who better than a Western-educated former prime minister of an Islamic country to speak about how Islam and the West can coexist? Well, we secured her as a speaker, but that would be the easy part. Her speech was scheduled a little over one year after 9-11, so security would be a major issue. Not just because she was a former head of state, but she was also Islamic. I asked her agent, the agency who represented her, if there were any security writers on her contract. I was stunned when he said there were not. I contacted the Rockford Police Department and explained what would be happening and asked them how they wanted to deal with it. I was put in touch with the chief of police. He said that they would provide a security detail the entire time she was in Rockford, as well as a car that could be secured at all times. The day came. And I was to meet her at the airport and travel with her to her hotel. The police picked me up at school since we had to be in the secured car. The chief of police himself was in the car, along with the driver. While we were traveling to the Rockford Airport, where her private plane was scheduled to land, the chief received a call that her plane had arrived a half hour early and that she was already there. I thought, this is not a good first impression. When we arrived, I walked to the waiting area near her arrival gate. She must have been told we arrived as she was walking toward us. This moment will remain with me forever. I saw a woman in a tan black pantsuit, loose fitting, carrying her own luggage, moving toward me. She could have fit anyone. At any airport, there was no indication that she was a former head of state. As we met, she said, hello, 
You must be Jack Henry. I'm Ben Zirkuta. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> what surprised me was that it was so normal. I didn't know what to expect. Not that. On the way to the hotel, we discussed the logistics of the rest of the day, and she apologized for being early. <laughs> that is one thing I remember about her. She went out of her way to make everyone feel at ease. We arrived at her hotel and got her checked in. The rooms on either side of her had been cleared, and one was occupied by a police detail. She had about four hours to relax until she was due back on campus, so the police brought me back here so I could check on things. I went to Burby, and a reporter came up to me and asked, you know when he's going to get here? Sure. <laughs> he must have thought former prime minister must be a guy, can't tell anything from the name. He couldn't even be bothered to read the press pack. She'll be here at 5, I replied. At 4.15, the police returned, and we went to the hotel to get her. We found her in a room with the policeman, munching on sandwiches. <laughs> Just so normal. We returned to the college, press conference, thankfully no stupid questions, dinner. She talked with the president's wife about raising their kid, parent talk. Normal again. After dinner, the police car drove us to the loading dock with Max. We went in, and there were police everywhere. The ones from the hotel had come out, and I would say there were a dozen or so. Max was standing room only, and there was a live audio video feed to the dance studio. I went over what would happen. I would go on and introduce her. She would enter, the national anthems of each country would be played, I would leave, and then she would speak. The moment came. The former Prime Minister and I were standing backstage. Even now, that seems so surreal to say. I told her it was time, and she put on her headscarf. The only other time that I'd seen her wear it was for the press conference, which struck me as odd at the time. She must have noticed my confused expression and said, I only wear it for public appearances. It's important that people see me as an Islamic woman. I took a deep breath and went on stage. When I returned, when I turned to watch her at the end of my introduction, the woman that entered was not the woman that I had been chatting with backstage. I don't know how to describe it. She had become a prime minister. She was no longer normal. She was the former leader of a country. There was magnetism and charisma coming from inside. You could see why so many people would stand behind her and believe in her vision. The anthems played. I left the stage, and she started to speak. Most of her speeches blur in my mind. I was so relieved that everything had gone so well. But there was one thing that stuck. She had been exiled from Pakistan when a hardline regime took power and was now living in Dubai. She said that one day she would return to Pakistan. And when she did, like a father, she would probably be assassinated. She finished her speech left the stage, where I was waiting, and we walked toward the hallway. One of the policemen came up and asked if they could get a picture. She guided us into the costume shop, where all the policemen were gathered. They took a group shot with her in the center and all the policemen beaming around. It was obvious that her charisma had affected them, too. She walked through the scene shop, got in the police car, and took to the airport. We had pulled it off. In spite of all the naysayers, we had done it. I was elated. Four and a half years later, she returned to Pakistan and was assassinated 
on December 27, 2007. I don't think it was a coincidence that, that was the one line that I clearly remembered from her speech. As I was preparing for this, looking back, I realized what an amazing life and career I had. I had a chance to do things and work with people I would never have dreamed of 41 years ago. Many times. As the events were actually happening, I never realized how special they were or how much they'd mean to me later. So, what to make of all of this? I guess preconceptions are frequently wrong. Things are always going to change, sometimes for the good, sometimes for the, uh, the worse. Around my house, and see all of the things that we brought home from our trips. It's not the things that are important, but the memories that they bring back. Those experiences are what make up your life. So, have as many as possible, and hold 